I have a few bets that I have placed with my colleagues, but one of the things that we have not seen yet, and we may get lucky in the fourth observing world, is we have not seen new, uh, gravitational waves from a standalone object. So if a neutron star has a few tiny mountains around it, and then the neutron star is constantly spinning, it is actually spinning the whole space time, and that kind of a continuous gravitational waves not a burst like this, but continuous, no matter when we see, it's always there. I think that would be a big discovery. The, uh, if I'm not correct, please correct me if I'm wrong, but don't the gravitational waves travel at the speed of light? That is our best measurement. And are, uh, we, are, we, are we still looking for something called graviton? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Then they would have to be massless, correct? Well, the current limit that we put on their mass is already so tiny that most theories predicting graviton mass has started becoming shaky. I'm so, sorry, with that? So the mass of graviton that we are measuring is already so small that any theory that was predicting mass, massive gravitons are already being eliminated. So it would be very likely that gravitons could be massless, which would be a kind of a bummer. How could you possibly find the way to detect the gravitons if they're massless? No, we, we see the propagation of, I mean, the best case is uh, something like this, when a light has come from an event and gravitational waves has also come from an event. So we both know how fast something is traveling, and then we can compare. Got it, got it. That's similar to a pulsar. Yes, that's, that's a pulsar, the rotating neutron star, yes. And rotating pulsars are one of the sources of gravitational waves. So one of your com uh, uh, comments made me thinking about, you said uh, we can use uh, E equals mc squared to kind of understand the amount of energy that uh, the neutron to black holes collision would emit at that given instant. So I was thinking maybe like uh, trying to understand it, that means you knew the mass difference and you put that mass difference. Yes. And how do you get the mass difference by looking at the radius at the beginning and the end? Yes. We do, you have, do you have that information? Yes. We look at gravitational waves uh, both before and after collision of the two black holes. So and have the sound about okay. So the waves that come from this patch versus the waves that come from this patch. So this is when a black hole has already collided and become one. And this is when the two black holes are separated. And so we know the measurement of masses here and we know the measurement of masses here. And that's how we actually know the difference. That's one way we know how the difference is. Thank you. Uh, from what we see on the screen here, you uh, you have two detectors. Uh, one detects it, and the other one, I mean, well, they both confirm each other. For the one in space, you just have the one. So, is there going to be something similar? It's actually six, because it's a triangle. So each arm, it's actually three. Sorry, we could have one L, one triangle, other triangle, and the third triangle. So the geometry is actually three detectors together. And that's why triangle geometry is the one that we are trying to make on the Earth next to one, which is called Einstein Telescope, which is either going to be in Italy or Netherlands, where uh, both the countries are, uh, are actually bidding to get that. Uh, it is going to be a triangle LIGO detector inside Earth, inside underground. And the triangle being because we can use each of them, each of our combination is a separate interferometer. Okay, so I actually have two questions. The first one being, you mentioned the LISA project. How are you guys planning on prototyping it or testing it before you guys send it off to space? Which it has been already been tested. It's called the LISA Pathfinder mission. Um, that was one of the big technology gap that needed to be shown because constructing a space mission, other than spending 15 plus years of many human life, human beings time, also cost a couple of billion dollars. And one of the biggest tests that has never happened is whether we can do interferometry in space. 
Lisa Pathfinder that was launched uh, at the same time as LIGO made the gravitational wave discovery. Who was able to show that? All right, and then the second question was, so towards the end you mentioned like going to space and becoming like spacefaring. So from your perspective or your expertise, do you think it is possible to move to space one day or what are yeah. your like opinions on it? Well, I absolutely think that I do imagine that in my lifetime I'm going to have coffee while looking at sunset on Mars. And if in my lifetime it can happen, then in the next lifetime maybe it can be um, at one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, sorry, um, and be able to do the same. And so it is inevitable that we as human race cannot be on this planet forever. Um, so. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned that growing up like in India, you have very little access to like science, like in your native language. Um, and now you've um, shared the breakthrough prize in physics. Um, what would you say was one thing that really helped um, your rise to becoming a scientist? I think deep down for me doing science is a very philosophical, spiritual expedition. Right? I do it completely out of my own selfish interest to learn the universe. Um, and that has just not ever changed. Like, I genuinely want to, I feel very scared as a human being that I don't know so much about the universe. Like, I don't know my own answers. And so for me to do science is a way to, of course, ask my own questions. And uh, that has been at least how I look at it. But at the same time, I'm also aware that uh, I think I had been on right time at right places that has made me lucky enough to be scientists who all don't have that same privilege. And uh, I hope that that kind of thing I can broaden. The uh, big fascination with uh, black holes over the last several years has been uh, the singularity of what may exist on the other side of a black hole, if anything. Do you believe that with astronomy in its current state, we would eventually be able to figure that out? And what are some uh, hypotheses that you feel may be uh, most convincing on what we know? Well, that's a great question. I don't know if just by the current level of, I wouldn't say technology, because gravitational wave itself is a very big technological leap for us to study black holes. But the very mathematical formulation of how does, so for example, I can give you a simple example. Let's say if a star becomes a black hole, it has one singularity at the center of it. But if a black hole is formed out of collision of two black holes, which has two singularities individually, and now they are colliding, of course those singularities eventually also merge. That kind of mathematical information is very difficult to parse right now. We are able to do certain level of simulations to see how the singularities behave. It's not well understood right now. We don't have the mathematical formalism to properly understand singularity. What could be the case is that it is not a classical black hole, but it's a quantum black hole, which should be the case conceptually. There has to be quantum physics involved at the level of singularity somehow. And it is able to prevent a sing known singularity the way we think. But something else is there. Um, that kind of what something else is there, I don't know if it is a question we can answer in a, in a finite time. In the BBC clip that you pay, uh, played, there was a reference to that have been traveling. Those particular ways have been traveling for several billion years. So, yes. what is the mechanism for determining uh, time in, yes. in these, and, and how long these have been traveling, and what area is there a directional factor to it? Yes, very much so. This is very much like we do astronomy, where in uh, let's say for an example, how do we know in the picture of uh, James Webb Space Telescope that the galaxy is very far? We look for something called red shifting of lines. The same kind of things we can able to do here as well. Right? The very lines that we are seeing here, if you had a sort of a standard map, right, that, that says this is a collision of this kind of black holes, then just based on the amplitude and the stretch that has happened because of the expansion of the universe, you can know how far something has come from. So we, do, uh, we are able to do the standard astronomy distance calculation 
are with gravitational waves. Where would you place the observatory on the moon, the light side or the dark side? And second question, did you go to school in India? Yes, I did go to, I studied in a government school in India. Which one? In uh, Gujarat. Uh, I, I know, in, but uh, where? In, uh, <laughs> in Baroda. Oh, not in Rajkot? Not in Rajkot. In the outskirts of Baroda, there's the boy. That's where I went to school. And yeah. I studied at MS University in Baroda before moving. Now, on the moon, it doesn't actually matter to us where we put on the moon. A uh, gravitational wave interacts to the front side of the moon and the back side of the moon practically the same way. But it does matter where NASA builds a base on the moon. Because if there is more geopolitical reasons to build something facing the Earth, then we build an observatory there. If there are more reasons to build something on the far side, because we already know um, other countries have probes on the far side, and if that is the ambition to build a base, then yes. So either ways for gravitational wave astronomy does not matter. I have two questions. A, is it known whether or not gravitational waves can be lensed or interfered with either A, by other gravitational waves, yes. or I thought about gravitational lensing occurring but with supermassive black holes and galaxies. Is it possible that they can be bent or refracted in some way? That's a beautiful question. Yes, yes, it can lens. It behaves just like light does. 